Well, for me, Accident Man's always gonna be number one. What is going on? Who ordered that hit, Lenny? I can't tell you that. It's payback time, fellas! Well, the bloody hell do I make this look like an accident? I got the comic book when I was a kid. I always felt that it would make a great movie. I was expecting somebody else to make it into a film they never did. And then when I started uh, making inroads into this business, I thought, okay, I'm gonna bring this film to the screen. There was a guy on TV the other night, had a theory that nearly a quarter of all so-called fatal accidents were actually murders. That's ridiculous. It's only about 10%. Out of all the movies I've made, this is uh, the closest to my personality, I suppose. It's a little bit zany. It's a little bit silly. Obviously, the, there's a lot of action. It's a little bit naughty, some bad language. Come on then, you little I apologize. Very dear to my heart. I got that, that comic book when I was a kid and eventually got the chance to, to make it into a movie. I actually wrote it with my childhood friend from school, Stu Small. Still one of my best friends now. We wrote it together over a period of time because we never really had an end date in sight. We just, it was something we were doing for a while. It turned out to be a really good script. Here you go, mate. I always felt that something like this, a comic book like this, would make a great movie. The film came out after Deadpool. And I know a lot of people were saying that uh, we were trying to copy Deadpool or people were saying that we were trying to copy John Wick. Uh, but that is, of course, not the case because we were writing this. Well, first of all, the initial comic book predates even the comic of Deadpool. And second of all, we wrote the script back in 2010 going through to 2012. But yeah, the style of that sort of um, adult written comic book, very violent, a little bit risky, a bit naughty. Um, that's in keeping with the Deadpool style. People drawing John Wick comparisons because obviously he's a hitman, uh, just like John Wick. In fact, Mike Fallon could easily fit into the world of, of John Wick. It's almost like that's going on at the Continental in New York and then back in England. We've got this going on. It's, it's almost like in the same world. But I love the character of Mike Fallon. He's, he's one of those lovable assholes, you know. He's a bit of a dick. And in the same way that John McClane is a bit of a dick or Bruce Willis's character in The Last Boy Scout is a bit of a dick. Oh, like you can talk. You know better than me, you home wrecker. Get out. That was a pretty good punch. What I wanted to do with that Accident Man was make a very entertaining film. I tell you nothing. Don't worry, mate. I don't want to know anything. I've done a few action films in the past that are very po-faced and serious. If it's not done right, it, it's really boring and obvious. I just wanted to make something very fun. You can kill my wife. She's been doing my f***ing head in for years. Mike, was that shit necessary? There's a lot of action in there, of course. For me, the standout action sequence was always gonna be the fight in the dojo, which I loved in the comic book, the way it was illustrated. Of course, we're very lucky to get Michael Jai White and Ray Park to play those characters. <laughs> Jane the Ripper, played by the wonderful Amy Johnson. She is incredible. She was the, the girl that I wanted to play this role way back when, because uh, she's petite, she's blonde, she's good looking, but she moves like uh, a killer, uh, amazing martial artist. I scheduled the movie myself, pretty much. I knew I was gonna be able to spend more time with the, the Jane the Ripper fight sequence, doing that second unit, me and Tim, and also the Mick and Matt fight, second unit, me and Tim, whilst Jesse was off shooting the flashback sequences with Ray Stevenson. Um, I always knew that we were gonna use that flashback sequence in order to give us more action in the film. So not only is it a story device, but it's also a device that allowed us to have more second unit time to slam more action into the film because we only had 24 days to shoot it. And the amount of action that's in the movie for a 24 day shoot, we did very well. Jumping up, kicking that guy off the bike. I ripped it off from uh, Wheels on Meals, obviously. Jackie Chan film. 
it's one thing to say you can do it and then to do it at five o'clock in the morning after doing a whole fight sequence with Tim Mann and then um, just before the sun comes up, jump up and over the bike and dub double front kick him. I didn't, wasn't sure I could do it to be honest, but I said I was gonna do it. So I made sure we did uh, and it was absolutely fine. I pay a little homage to Richard Norton in the movie. He was famous for some kung fu movies back in the day, like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Shanghai Express, and I always loved the way he delivered the line. Painful, painful, painful. I love the scene between me and Ray Stevenson in the bar. And you know, to write these words along with Stu, who's, you know, his dialogue is, is brilliant. And to see those words come to life, being read by somebody like Ray Stevenson is, is always a thrill. You know, we, we did our best with the budget we had. I think the film turned out really great. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing Accident Man too. We have the script ready to go. Coronavirus has got in the way, but um, hopefully at some point we will be able to bring you guys Accident Man 2. And I don't just fight people anymore. <laughs> Can destroy them. Ah!